Hello, uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching this, uh, this is actually a video on demand uh, or it'll be up in YouTube. Uh, my stream right now has a problems with delays. So now we're just waiting for both teams to begin before I start my formal introduction. And you're watching actually the Jetto Cup uh, group stages. And, and this is your host uh, for tonight, uh, Charles Tan. Okay, so both teams, both teams are in, and uh, welcome to the Jetto Cup group stages. We have these two teams, Living Online versus Paradise, and this is your host, uh, Charles. And uh, as a backgrounder, Living Online right now, I think, has one win and four losses, while Paradise is, is one of the two teams right now who's still undefeated. They have three wins, uh, and they're tied with uh, AZW, if I'm not mistaken. So they're... A contender for the semi-final slot so now it's living online's turn to ban and their first ban is the lone druid so usually you ban lone druid uh, uh, if you want to avoid the fast and fast pushing lineup at the beginning and also occasionally he's used to as a counter for the outworld devourer so we should do watch that and now Paradise actually bans the Dark Seer, a very potent offlaner. And he brings a lot uh, to the team fights, especially with his vacuum wall combo, although he needs levels early on. Sorry, excuse me for that. Okay, and now let's maybe let's talk more about the Jetto Cup. You can actually find more info and the current standings at their Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Jetto Cup. And they also have a tum Tumblr page, a friendly Tumblr, ah, sorry, friendly Dota, the Tumblr .com. So now, uh, Living Online bans the Bat Rider. He's a very potent initiator. And he's flexible in terms of his lanes. He can either go to the mid lane or in the off lane. And then Paradise uh, bans the Alchemist. Alchemist, very potent carry, especially with his Grievous Greed, which lets him farm early on. And actually, right now, there's another game going on. Between uh, between teams Red Mask, Beast, and Jokes on Yao, and one of their picks is actually the Alchemist, and he's doing uh, well at least before we started this game. So now we're looking on Living Online's first pick. I they have several options uh, for them. Normally, I think they pick supports early on so that us do not reveal their strategy. And speaking of that, they pick the Naga Siren. Now the Naga Siren is actually a uh, flexible hero in terms of laning he could she could go either she could be played in mid or carry but lately uh she's played as a support now jakiro actually goes with two quick picks once the jakiro uh great support and has a long range initiation or counter initiation with that ice path and they pick the slark which is uh you can go in the mid lane or on the safe lane but most likely this is a uh, mid lane hero and he has a lot of ganking potential especially once he reaches level 6 which enables him to have incredible move speed and uh, HP regeneration if the enemy doesn't see him and this is actually another pick from the current game right now going on simultaneously as this one and okay living online picks their second uh, support the warlock is usually very potent thanks to his chaotic offering which uh, stuns the enemy and and summons uh, an incredible powerful golem which actually can be used for pushing and uh, for the laning phases for the laning phase his fatal bands in shadow world is very good as well so now living online bans the OD uh, for me that telegraphs that they're they're still uh, planning their their mid hero usually OD is very good against uh, the intelligence based Heroes like the Queen of Pain, like the Puck, or even the Storm Spirit. Although knowing Living Online, they might be looking actually to pick the Puck, but they actually might save that for their fifth pick and instead use their next two choices for their offlaner and their main carry. So now Paradise bans the Weaver. Uh, Weaver actually is a very flexible hero as well. You can see him go in the off lane. You can see him go on the safe lane, and even uh, occasionally you can see him in mid. 
Uh, and what's the thing there is he's very elusive, and if the teams don't really have any solid lockdown, it's very hard to deal with the we Weaver later on, especially when he gets his Lincoln Spear. And right now, Paradise has, doesn't have a lineup that has that kind of lockdown, so uh, it's a good ban for them. And now Living Online uh, actually bans the Troll Warlord. Again, I think they're fe they're fearing a, a, a fast power push, especially with that Lone Druid ban. And the same can be said for the Troll Warlord. His ulti can give uh, incredible, uh, well, at least significant attack speed, and that helps in pushing towers. And he's actually also a very tanky hero, especially with the combination of his melee skill which gives him additional HP and armor as well as his wearing blades which give uh, which gives a 70% 70, 70 miss chance on those right clicks now it's actually paradise's turn to ban i think yeah they, they banned one carry and i was gonna say they should ban another carry and that's what they do they actually ban the life stealer uh like the weaver flexible in terms of laning and incredible and a very potent presence early on. So now Paradise uh, picks the clockwork. He he's usually laned either in mid or in the off lane, but uh, but normally uh, on the off lane because he has cogs, which gives him some protection from the enemy. And uh, if you actually skill uh, battery assault and cog early on, you can get uh, an early kill if the position and timing is right. And uh, Living Online now goes for the Windrunner. Uh, Windrunner is actually one of those heroes that can be either played as a support or offlaner. Although in this case, with that Nagasari and Warlock, I, I'm expecting this Windrunner can, will be a offlaner. Although uh, another alternative is for her to go on mid. But I don't think she's going to be a mid hero in this occasion. So now Paradise picks their... Uh, carry the specter and he actually this is a very mobile lineup the specter can always uh, hunt uh, To join the team fights then clockwork has that initiation with the hook while the slark is very fast in general uh, as long as The enemy doesn't have vision of him. So living online now picks their uh, carry the gyrocopter so he has a lot of team fight ability especially with call down and in late game the flak cannon is a uh, powerful especially if you're able to farm a decent uh, damage item and early on that rahan barrage can net you some kills especially when you have a naga siren who has an ensnare uh the warlock not so much although yeah if you do, although if you do lane the naga siren and windrunner that's uh potentially two disables and with that and the uh, Rocket Barrage could easily kill uh, he uh, the enemy hero. Although in this occasion, I think it's just gonna be a Naga Siren Warlock Gyrocopter on the safe lane. I'm not sure if they have enough to go on offensive dry lane. So it's the Paradise's turn to ban. I think, yeah, they should ban one of those uh, mid heroes. Uh, usually, we've also seen, I think, uh, the Elder Titan all at, at Timbersaw. Those are good mid hero bans. Uh, we've also seen the Templar Assassin, uh, or for more stability, there's also the Dragon Knight. And now they ban the Faceless Void. I'm not sure if this is actually a good ban. I, I mean, Living Online has already picked their hard carry, the Gyrocopter, and this is most likely a hard, uh, safe lane Gyrocopter. Although it is possible for the Gyrocopter to go mid, I don't think that's the case here though. And I think they're just looking uh, as a safety like. The faces void uh, late game if he gets some farm, and with his ulti the Chrono Spear, there's really not much he can do to interrupt him hunting down or killing at least one hero. So now living online is uh, taking their time uh, to select their final ban. Yeah, I think they uh, the pool is wi still wide open for Paradise's support hero. I think yeah they could go something like the Crystal Maiden. Uh, the other day I saw Leshrac being played, although I don't think it was by Paradise. Yeah. Okay, so they they banned the Nyx Assassin, which uh, can be an annoying support, especially with his Vendetta. It'll okay. So now Paradise goes for uh, 
the disruptor uh it's a great uh counter initiation i mean uh if if a hero is teleporting to the defender tower he can just cast glimpse and send them back and waste that teleport and kinetic field is also good at isolating heroes but uh overall you know that uh between kinetic field and glimpse you have these ways of initiating or catching up to fleeing heroes and you, as we were saying before, this is a very mobile lineup with the Slark Clockwork Inspector. So I think the Disruptor uh, is just fine with that. He's looking to move with them and uh, set up, up and follow up the pickoffs uh, if any of the three cores uh, manages to find one. So now living online's turn, uh, this might be a puck. Actually, yeah, this might be a good opportunity for them to pick the puck since their player cookies is a... Uh, relatively good with with that puck and he brings a lot to the team fight and and actually you know it's a way of uh, disla disabling several of the heroes you've also seen him play the bat rider before but uh it's a uh, they actually banned it right now they could also probably go for a queen of pain or even a storm spirit uh i was gonna say they could uh, go for a viper since he He's good at single damage and and that corrosive skin is always good. Although the problem I dislike about Viper is he doesn't bring much to team fights in the sense that he has no AOE ability. Okay, so actually the game's now starting and uh, uh, thank you for watching. It's pretty late right now, uh, but you can always catch this uh, on my YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash user slash charles a tan 2 actually the other games are there but let me introduce the teams right now for the radiant side for team paradise we have pendragon on the slark rain man on the specter the De demandred 1687 on the clockwork martin panda on the disruptor and rav on the jakiro for the dire side we have cookies on the gyrocopter Actually, uh, roll switch. Usually, Cookies plays the mid hero. Sky on the off lane Windrunner. Uh, Jetto on the Viper. This is most likely a mid uh, Viper. Foshime on the Naga Siren. And Bacon on the Warlock. So, right now, R Radiant is uh, scouting their jungle, just protecting it from any warding. Well, this uh, Windrunner is already in position. She actually has some cosmetic items there. And then this Slark is uh, just securing the 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 top rune, and our game is about to begin. Begin. So, Let's begin. so both sides really have potent uh, lineups. I mean, the Gyrocopter Inspector have are very viable for for the for the long game for the long term. Uh, I mean, if this stalls out, they both have a uh, carry potential, heavy carry potential. And then, yeah, there's pings here uh, as this Slark uh, blocks the, the creep spawn with his illusion, but he actually drops a sentry ward here, so that will actually block the pull. And also, nice placement there, the other illusion blocks this uh, hard camp, although that's actually something that the, 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 sl uh, well, the clockwork could use uh, later on. The, the offensive uh, pull, which is only possible if you're on the Radiant side. So now this Jakiro is just zoning out the Windrunner. And okay, we have a pause from from LOL, living online as their Warlock uh, got disconnected. So uh, while we wait for them, uh, let me just turn on my overlays. Okay, and I'm back, and thanks for waiting. So now it's uh, actually interesting to see what... Uh, f for me, this game will be determined by your mid-heroes. I mean, uh, we were talking about earlier, Paradise is a very mobile lineup. So this Slark, once he reaches level 6, uh, you want him to look for ganks. And uh, But on the other hand, when you, you're laid against the Viper, he can easily uh, isolate you. And... Uh, and with Viper Strike, that's a lot of poison damage. 
well actually the poison attack and then when she reaches level 6 the viper strike so that's a slow and the poison damage uh, combined but the thing is uh once once Slark reaches level 6, he can just stand back and regenerate all of that poison damage. So that's one thing going for him, but the question is, will he survive this lane long? And actually, right now, this the, this Viper's already level 2, while the Slark is uh, still level 1, just a small advantage. And if you're looking at the CS charts, the Spectre currently has 3 last hits, while the Gyrocopter has 2. And then the Slark actually has one one last hit and one deny, while all the Viper has one deny. So we're barely a minute in, so it's understandable. Uh, but the the Spectre is actually farming very well. I mean, you've hit. I think that's uh sixty percent of your of the, the initial creep wave. No, actually, that's two creep waves. So he's missed actually seven creeps. So perhaps not not that good. Uh. Especially when when your supports are isolating the Windrunner, who still doesn't have any XP right now. Uh, but uh, <laughs> okay, so there's a high from the from both teams. And uh, actually, I want to talk about uh, how big this uh, creep block by the uh, by the radiant is. Uh, we we. Uh, and that's something and that's something actually the radiant is able to take advantage of right now if uh if you if you know the team quantic uh fucking mad right now is is writing actually a series of articles on his blog about about uh playing support and he he talks about how the in the how a support you want to take advantage of the creep camps during the initial levels at level one to four. I mean, once you reach level four, it's it the XP growth isn't that uh, exponential, or you need more XP to level up, so you don't get as much benefit from the creep camps anymore. So before then, you want to take advantage of creep camps as much as uh, possible. So now, actually, there's a request for a remake. And actually, we're we're not yet uh, one minute into game, so it's not yet save. Usually, there's a way to okay. So now we might uh, just remake the game. We're just waiting for actually uh, both players from both teams. They suffered a disconnection. Okay, so there's some banter between these two team teams, and yeah, while well, we're talking, yeah, um, you should check out the up article by Fucking Mad with regards to playing support. So actually, there are two ways to play support. I mean, one prioritizes farm early on so that they can have a bigger impact during the mid game, while while the other while the other type of playing support is being aggressive. Uh, in the early levels, you, you know, you rotate or set up set up ganks so to, to deny the enemies early on. And yeah, when when we talk about the early game, that's uh where the supports are are at the peak of their strength. Well, it it depends. Like the next assassin, for example, needs level six, but a hero like this Nag is actually already very potent at level one, level two. This uh Riptide the significant damage at just level 1 it's 130 damage and on uh, two armor reduction for example well this uh Jakiro, you know the the ice path uh isn't bad with the, uh with at least for that w 1 second uh, stun but looking more towards something like dual breath or even uh this uh far if if he gets the thunder strike on this already 120 damage reduced by but reduced by the damage so we'll just uh remake the game
Okay, so we'll just uh remaking the game, so thank you for being patient. And uh just give me a few seconds as we remake the game. Okay, so both teams are coming in and we have uh we have Paradise on the Radiant side while uh Living Online is on the dire side. So we're just waiting now for both teams to to join in their their slots. As one of their players is having uh experiencing a bug where the reconnect button isn't there for for the game. Okay, so there's a query there if Uh, so now we'll just uh, email, uh, contact the admins. Okay. Okay, so just uh, joining in and then. And then just waiting for other moderator, uh, Vani Roos, who's just be joining us. And let me ask if the teams are ready now. And uh, Vani's reporting with the other match. Uh, Jokes on Yao uh, won the game. And that was a... I, yeah, they had a decent lineup. Uh, and now we're remaking this uh, second game. And thank you for watching. Uh, for those who've missed it, this is actually the a remake of the group stages match for the Jetto Cup. We have uh, Paradise on the Radiant side and... Living online for the dire, and now uh, we're just waiting for one of their players to reconnect. And again, good evening, and thank you for watching. If you want more info on the Jetto Cup, you can actually visit their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jetto Cup, or their Tumblr page, uh, friendlydota.tumblr.com. And now we have uh, these two teams, Living Online and Paradise. Uh, Living Online right now, I think, has one win and four losses. While Paradise is one of the two teams right now who, are, who are, have yet to be defeated. Uh, they have three win wins. And they're tied with ACW with who also has three wins for now. And I think uh, Jokes on Yao is the one uh, leading. Okay, so let me introduce my co-caster right now, uh, Vani. Okay, hi. But mm -hmm. I'm not casting because I'm still not uh, feeling too well. So just continue your casting. Okay, so yeah. I guess he will just be our statistician for now. <laughs> as he was doing some excellent uh, stati uh, stats uh, early on in the previous game. Okay, so now actually we're just waiting for the loadout screen as both uh, teams have picked their heroes. And again, uh, let me introduce them. We have Martin Panda on the on the Disruptor, Pendragon on the Slark, Rav on the Jakiro, Rainman on the Spectre, and Demandred 1687 on the Clockwork. For the Dire side, you have Sky on the Windrunner, aptly named I might say, Bacon on the Warlock, Jetto on the Viper, Foshime on the Nag Siren, and cookies on the gyrocopter so they're going on the same lanes uh no offensive tri lane here and yeah and they're saying uh, hopefully there's no uh, dis disconnect and it looks like this wind run is trying to plant a ward to block the creep pool which she wasn't able to do in the previous uh, game so that's a nice play on her part but the jakiro spots her but she easily gets away with that uh, wind run and on, on top, this Warlock is uh, guarding the the top rune. I think the Slark wants to make a go at it. And he was able to maximize an in 
early illusion rune in the previous game. Uh, it actually blocked both the creep camp, the medium creep camp, and the hard creep camp here. So uh, actually, I think uh, they were winning in that sense uh, early on because uh, Dire ha uh, Radiant had access to their creep pulls while Dire didn't. And now we're actually seeing a juxtaposition of that situation. Uh, now it's the Radiant uh, creep. Uh, Creep point that's blocked. The question is, will they have uh, sentry wards to deward it? And it's not on the disruptor. Let's look at the Jakiro. He actually has sentry ward, so he needs to make a guess. And the thing with with this ward placement is that uh, it's not exactly the the typical. Well, it's not the optimal position, but uh, not be placing in the optimal position can can might mean also that your your opo the uh, enemy won't uh, be able to deward it so now we're there's we're looking at at mid uh, er, uh, in the previous game the viper was more or less uh winning the last hits in the nice but now it i think it's uh well actually the slark uh, winning right now with one one last hit and one deny while the viper actually just has a, a single deny so actually there's actually Interesting here, uh, Jato is taking the mid uh, lane now instead of Cookies. Yes, uh, Cookies was normally placed the mid hero, but now it's a uh, Cookies who's playing the the carry role. Uh, yeah, I, actually, yeah, that was how they laned it uh, earlier. I also mentioned that, but I forgot to mention it again now. And then at what po at, at one at what point uh, did they got DC? <laughs> uh, it was actually less than a minute, so it's not that. Uh... Yeah, it was like uh, I was checking even the log because actually Dota saves has a save file. Actually, it saves every minute, but it didn't even reach that mark. It was like at fifty-two seconds. So yeah, and then okay, okay so now uh, actually excellent last hitting right now. Both carries are getting some last hits. The Spectre has eleven last hits, and while well, the Gyrocopter has five. And then on mid, it's surprisingly tight. The the Viper's actually tied with the Slark, and I don't think that should really be the case. I mean, you have range, you have poison, so you should be dom dominating the Slark, especially early on. Uh, once it once they reach level 6, it might be a different matter. The Slark will have his regeneration from his ultimate. So now, actually, the Slark makes a go at his Viper, and uh, Jet on his Viper just just forced to run away. So actually, that's a victory, but I don't know why... Okay, the Slark is just going back, uh, taking the long way back to his lane. Uh, but that's a lot of uh, creeps headed Jetto's way, so that'll be a lot of XP for him as as he hits uh, behind the tower. And then let's look at the offlaners. This Clockworks now level two, while this Windrun is also level two. So so both both offlaners are well surviving. So that's what matters. And yeah, I like this build by the Clockwork, uh, getting pa power cogs and battery assault. So now there's a pause as it's it's the warlock again, bacon uh, getting disconnected. So hopefully this won't last too long. And then checking the stats in mid, yeah, it's the Stark who continues to dominate the CS charts. He has eight last hits and two denies. Well, this viper he has a region rune, but he only has uh five last hits right now and one deny. So that that's. It's really a lane that the Viper should be winning, and once the Slark uh, hits level six, it's it's going to be problematic really for the Viper as he can't harass the Slark anymore. However, however, once they reach level six, I think the the Radiant team wants want to rotate. I mean, we're talking about mobility. You have the Clockwork who has Hook to initiate. You have the Slark who's innately fast thanks to Shadow Dance. Uh, once he's out of vision from the enemy, and you have the Spectre who can use a uh, hunt to to jump directly into team fight and of course the the dark seer will sorry the disruptor is always uh flexible with uh with with that glimpse so they can easily get look for some some ganks early on and what's nice with this uh disruptor pick is if the enemy comes into teleport uh if the disruptor uh sees it he can just cast glimpse and send them back to wherever they teleported from so you're not only wasting a teleport scroll but you're also preventing them from returning to the battle 
Okay, so some nice uh, data there from 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 Va from Vani, Vani, our valuable moderator and the uh, silent co-host. So now uh, Bacon has uh, reconnected. Actually, I think Bacon right now is actually one of the stand-ins for Living Online. Let, let me check their names. Yeah, they actually have another player. Uh, who plays the other support role and uh, Bacon is usually their sub. For Pilot, I'm not yet sure how... Uh, I'm not that familiar with their players. But but right now in this uh, tournament, they've been doing really, really, really well. And with uh, Living Online's uh, losing streak right now, they really ne need this victory. PLDC? I think that's a short... A uh, combination for PLDT or or I or the common ISP here in the Philippines, and they ask, uh, "Is Jetto the Jetto Cup the, of the Jetto Cup?" And and yes. And if you check my overlays, you'll see his photo there. Let me double check that. Okay, my overlays are there, and if you're just watching in, you can actually find the VOD of this. Uh, match at uh, my YouTube page, uh, youtube.com slash user slash Charles Aitan2. But you can also check out the other games uh, on Twitch TV, twitch.tv slash JetoCup or Vanny uh Twitch TV page as well, uh, twitch.tv slash Vanny that's V-A-N-I-E-R-U-Z. And of course, if you want more info about the JetoCup, you can check out uh, the Facebook page. Facebook.com slash uh, JettoCup or their Tumblr, friendlydota.tumblr.com So now there's just a harassment by the Viper on the Slark. And uh, this Nagasarin is just uh, exploiting th this uh, creep pool. So there's actually another disconnection. So we have another pause. And I think the internet right now of of living online's fourth player isn't doing uh, too well, and actually, uh, it's uh, also crucial timing because uh, no, yeah, well, uh, right now for the side of radiant, looks like this this one runner is in trouble. Um, the Jakiro's ice pad is actually on cooldown, but the specter is making a go at this uh, wind runner, and oh, too bad he doesn't have desolate. It would help. With this wind, wind runner who's actually isolated right now, but and the disruptor's glimpse is actually on cooldown, so actually that's how they managed to catch up to this wind runner. Let's see if they can net a kill here with with the body block with the body blocks. Yeah, and I mean wind runner actually already uses the wind run. It's now actually on cooldown. But uh, I I don't think it's a guaranteed kill yet, especially since uh, Radiant's uh, hero supports have their skills similarly on cooldown, and that the Spectre didn't get uh, desolate. If the Spectre did get de desolate, I think yeah, this Windrunner is uh, dead since it does extra damage if there's no no nearby allies or allied creeps. So we're just uh, waiting right now for both teams. This is uh, the DC game. And if you're watching us live, uh, thank you for watching. It's actually quite late right now. I think it's uh, 11.30. So that's dedication from your players. They, they go to work and then once they get home, they participate in this tournament. And we're just waiting for their fifth player. And let me check the console. Yeah, the game has been saved uh, during the three three minute mark. Okay, so nice stats there by Vani. Fourteen picks, including this game throughout the entire Jet the Cop elimination round. And actually, these are pre pretty standard heroes. I mean, they. None of these heroes, I think, have never been picked previously. I've even seen the Spectre, I think, in the previous game, although I think the team that picked him lost. Also, we've also see seen the Slark. 
and uh, he, I think that one was a counter even to an OD and of course clockwork is good and now we're just uh, waiting for the reconnection let me ping them okay so Bacon has returned hopefully he can uh, sign back in and hopefully there's no more uh, disconnects so there there's cheers and this game can go on right now I think there there has been longer waiting time than the actual game and the bottom looks like they get that kill on that windrunner we we're talking about uh, him escaping yeah actually the Jakiro's uh, dual breath there slowing her down just in time and dealing that last bit of damage and in mid yeah this this lark is uh, getting some levels He's actually still quite healthy, he still has his salve and uh, his tango despite facing off a viper. So I think uh, that's a misplay by the viper, he, he, he could be more aggressive and in a minute or two he'll actually lose the opportunity to harass the slark. Unless there's some rotation from the mid. And there's a hard keep camp uh, stack here, care of the nag siren. And with her reptile she can actually... Uh, kill, kill that uh, wave off but now look like they they tried to make up a, a pull but uh well now they finally get it with this uh, range heroes and I don't think the the clockwork can really contest that and he should just he's just content to get whatever creeps he can get and he's actually tied with the wind runner for XP yeah so uh, despite giving that uh first blood the Windrunner isn't doing too bad. Well, uh, <laughs> Van is telling us about Spectral Dagger. I think the problem with the Cogs is it also knocks you back. So, uh, well, I think you can go through it, but it will knock you back as well. So, it won't really do any good unless you you have something like a BKB. Because right now, BKB doesn't prevent the damage, but it does prevent the knockback on the Clockwork Cogs. Okay, so sorry about that. On mid, the the Viper finally gets a kill on the Slark. I guess he was being too aggressive, and that's the that's the thing with the Viper. Between his poison attack and neither toxin, and now Viper Strike he can deal a lot of damage. So you have to be wary. And I'm not sure if the yeah the Slark didn't even use his uh, healing salve then. And now he's making looking to make a go at the Viper, and so. With with that uh, pounce and some right clicking, actually the dark pack he he secures the kill and reaches a level seven. So now he'll have insane HP regeneration as long as he stays out of vision from the enemy. And this clockwork is looking to contest this pull. Oh yeah, but doesn't make a go at it. And then uh, on bottom, yeah, this windrun is just staying back. Okay, okay, this uh, clockwork dives deep and. We're seeing the power of the battery assault and cogs, so if they've isolated the Nog Siren, but that uh, battery assault is dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, and right now it's at level 2, and at level 2, 35 uh, damage over, I think it's 9 seconds, is a significant amount. So now, uh, they just harass the Windrunner. So, right now I think it's a advantage for the Radiant, I mean... They did give up first blood and this is Lark's making another go the Viper. So he tries to poison him but thanks to that dark pack he gets rid of the poison. And he also had his uh, ultimate Shadow Dance which net which made him temporarily invisible. And when the Slark is invisible he's gaining uh, a lot of X uh, HP. So now the Slark's rotating top I think he might catch the Warlock. Uh, the Warlock. If he knows he's there, but no, he doesn't know that the warlock is there, so he just making looking to dive this gyrocopter. Okay, so it, uh, he pounces and uh, one hit to it, he dies, but not before using uh, his call down. It hits both heroes, but uh, there's no follow up damage. And this warlock's looking to chase. He actually curses the uses his skill on the clockwork, but I don't think that's enough to kill him. And I, I guess that buys uh, the Viper here some free farm, but Dire lost their carry, so definite a win right now for for the Radiant. I'm, and if we look at the XP chart, it's a 
1,500 uh, XP lead favoring the Radiant. And of the gold chart, it's a uh, 1,500 uh, gold lead. So sorry I missed that. Uh, looks like the Disruptor managed to secure the kill on the Windrunner. So that's the second kill given up by by the Dire offlaner. So things are looking really, really well right now for the, for, for the Radiant. And actually, right now, I don't think both teams have vision. Okay. So now uh, the Nag Siren drops a observer ward on the top top river, giving them a vision of of the runes. And I don't think it'll spot the. Okay, actually, you should spot the rotating slark, who actually just goes to the secret shop. Now, now it's actually a crucial time for ganking because it's night time. So all the heroes have limited vision. And uh, I think limited vision is something that the Slark is happy to abuse since it gives him more move speed and uh, regeneration. And we're talking about the power of this mobility. The Spectre has has is already level seven, so he he can always just jump into team fights with Hunt. This Clockwork is level six, so he has hook. Although I'm not sure he wants to hook right now at that uh, gyrocopter, knowing that the supports are nearby. Still, if he does get that. Hook into a cogs. I think there's really not much that the dire can contest it, especially if the specter hunts into it. S still, I think he's afraid to make a go at the gyrocopter since the gyrocopter has a rocket barrage. So it's an that's another significant damage over time skill, just like the the just like his a uh, battery assault. But the slark is rotating in, and he he would spot this a uh, creep pull. I'm not sure if he's going to dive right now. Yeah, he's just happy to hang back. But uh, there's actually an invisible viper. I'm not sure if he's aware. So there's a hook there by the clockwork. Uh, but the uh, gyro drops a rocket barrage, uh, and the specter hunts in. So they get uh, the kill on the warlock. The clockwork eventually dies. But they're continuing the chase. Uh, Radiant manages to kill the Viper as well as the Nag Siren. So that's a 3 for 1 trade. So that definitely went well for them. And uh, well, their carry is there. So that's some support money going his way. And actually, there's a teleport here by, by the Warlock. Actually, during that, that game, nice, uh, nice glimps by the Disruptor sending back the fleeing. Send back by the fleeing uh, viper, and hopefully this windrunner uh, has his chance to farm or even push this lane. Sorry, uh, Vanny corrects me. The viper was killed by the neutrals, so that might that that that's a good uh, deny on their part. I mean, a death is a death, but at least no no gold uh, went the way of the radiant. Okay, so they're they're spinning uh and a nice hook there to catch the Windrunner so that you, you're seeing the power of the battery assault and actually the I think Vanny was right the, the Spectre can go to the cogs thanks to his uh, thanks to his Spectral Dagger and um, hmm, one of them has mana boots you know. okay so actually on top there's a they killed the Disruptor but not before killing the but not before killing. Sorry. Okay, actually, Dire gets a return kill on the Jakiro, uh, but they still lost their carry, the Gyrocopter. And then the, this uh, Viper meets the Slark, but the Slark just uses Dark Pack to remove the poison and steps back and will regen his HP now. So, lots of fights right now. I mean. We're 12 minutes in and there are 14 kills on the map. Well, mo most of them favoring the Radiant, but uh, right now I think it's still any anyone's game. It's just that Dire right now is uh, in trouble and they need to keep their carry alive. This Dire has always the catch-up ability to go for the Divine Rapier and the Flak Cannon combination as a last-ditch effort, but he needs to find the farm in order to do so. The Spectre, on the other hand, uh, Already has his uh, face boots. Not sure if he's go going for early team fights with the drums. And uh, at at the top, they find the warlock who uses his chaotic offering, but he's he dies to the combination of the slark and this uh, disruptor. The the gyrocopter uh, comes in though and gets a kill on the disruptor, but uh, 
more heroes rotate in and the gyrocopter dies again uh well they get a return kill on the slark and and uh the hero so big big nice rotations there and it's a messy team fight i mean ultimately i think it was a 3-4-2 so that uh favored the the dire i mean they did lose their carry but they did get important kills on the on the slark and uh, with that double damage Runite on the Viper, they're looking to push this mid tower while the Spectre just goes for a a tower trade. But uh, the Gyrocopter rotates in and I think he's looking to deny his his bottom tower. Will he? Yes, okay. He's now going for the denies. And uh, on mid, we have this team fight. Uh, the, they get a kill on the Windrunner thanks to, to the cogs by the Clockwork. I thought I saw the Spectre die, but it was just an illusion. And then on top, we see the Dire uh, supports, just pressuring the top tower. Okay, so there's uh, another ping. I, I'm not sure if this Clockwork wants to make a go at this Viper. He's still waiting for his hook to go on cooldown. And then this Lark might find the Naga Siren and hunt her. She's actually level 8 now, so she'll have sleep to counter-initiate later on. And... Uh, there's a thunderclap. Actually, this Jakiro meets finds the warlock, but he just uh, flees. But now uh, darts forward, especially with the Slark and the disruptor there. Looks like they're going to dive and they drop an observer ward. And actually, right now it's only the radiant side who has observers on the map. Uh, the gyrocopter is just pressuring um, bottom, so it's a carry on carry fight. But the Spectre right now doesn't have much items yet. I think I think this Spectre is looking to farm a Radiance. But he... Ooh, nice Shackle shot there by by the Windrunner. And together with the call down uh, from the Gyrocopter, they get the kill. And, and that was a much needed kill. And I think... Uh, need to pause because there's a disconnection from the warlock and okay we're talking about that specter death that was a very integral kill he was actually going for a radiance and already had 3000 gold in the bank but with his death uh that, that it's gonna set his sacred relic back so the thing with the radiance build if you do it, it leaves your carry very fragile but it uh it and it doesn't allow him to participate in team fights a lot but if you do get it on uh, early on you can use it to accelerate your farm and go for a long term long term mid game strategy so right now if we look at the network chart the specters on top with 4691 but the gyrocopter especially with the, that kill at, at bottoms uh catching up with 8918 gold followed by the slark and the viper so you know it's still pretty much an even fight uh the specter hasn't died much this is actually i think his first death uh let me check that yes it's his first death well the gyrocopter has actually died uh, three times already uh this game so we're talking about uh builds uh the gyrocopter right now just has his Face into Wraith Band. I think he's looking. He actually has 1,800 gold saved. I'm not sure if he wants to go for the drums now or even go for the BKB directly. And uh, yeah, this Viper's actually going for the BKB. At least that's what I think with that Org Club. He already has his uh, face boot as well. While the Slark uh, bought a Vanguard. I'm not that big a fan of a Vanguard. Its, it's value has depreciated as of late. I think a drums uh, would significantly help more and adds more than just HP and this clockwork is looking to I think uh, he's building his drums okay so yeah we we'll just wait for the warlock who, who who's recently having some disconnection issues and then if you look at the minimap, yeah, we have a sentry ward here dropped by the dire. I think that was when they were hunting the slark. And then Radiant still has this offensive uh, observer ward. 
So, I guess the question is at bottom whether this Windrunner and Gyrocopter can push the lane and finally break uh, break this tower. Okay, so looking at both teams, uh, we're talking about the mo mobility of the Radiant. We've seen it, some of it right now. The question is if they can capitalize it more during the mid game. Uh, uh, definitely, the the initiation and counter initiation is in their on their side, and perhaps what we haven't yet seen is a uh, counter initiation by by the dire. Like you have the Naga Siren who can cast sleep, so that if they do initiate on the carry, she can cast her sleep and just teleport away. You can also have the Warlock's uh, ultimate, the Chaotic Offering, which provides an area stun. What was nice earlier on though was that the Windrunner was on point together with the Gyrocopter. The, the Shackle Shot disabled the Spectre long enough for the Gyrocopter to get that kill, especially with the with that call down. And that's it, what really what this Windrunner brings. Uh, normally you don't see players uh, skilling Focus Fire, her ultimate, because it doesn't provide much in terms of the team fight. You really want to go for the Shackle Shot, which is now level 4. So that's a potential 3.75 seconds stunning uh, two heroes if you get the right angle. And there's only a few select heroes that have a st uh, stun duration that. Uh, that lasts that long. I mean, one is the Chaos Knight, who who, who has it at two chance two to four seconds. There is actually the Alchemist, but you need to charge your stun. And then there's the Dragon Knight, whose stun lasts that long as well, but uh, his initiation range isn't that far. So Windrunner is uh, one of those very skill-dependent heroes you need to to have that good aim, but when you do get it, it can easily turn away the team fights. Now let's look at the Radiant supports. Actually, this the Kiro has his uh, arcane boots and has the wards, and the disruptor also just has mana boots. I think uh, no, none of their supports are yet, yet looking yet to get the mechanism. And then, hmm. okay, so we're just uh, still waiting for for Living Online's fourth uh, fourth member to reconnect. Yeah, and then uh, okay, let's maybe let's look at the levels right now to give us a scope of the game. Yeah, right now, uh, Dyer's. Right now, Dyer's uh, support heroes are have that slight advantage. They're level eight as opposed to the level seven from uh, no, from uh, from the other. Sorry, uh, three of Dyer's heroes are level eight and level seven, and the Radiant's uh, definitely ahead. Okay, so we're just waiting for their other teammate. Hmm. And I guess, yeah, uh, thank you again if you're spectating this. And thank you for being patient. It's already quite late in the evening. And thank you for watching this this Jetto Cup uh, match between Paradise and Living Online. Right now, Living Online really needs to win the game. Uh... I think they are on one, one for the score right now is one for at least they just have one victory so far. Well, Paradise has won all of their games right now. Uh, they have three wins out of the three games that they've played. So they're definitely in in the lead to take the to qualify at least for the semifinal uh, for the. Yeah, for the semifinals. Sorry, for the semifinal brackets. Sorry, for the playoffs. Okay. So, so Vanny, what? Okay, you go ahead. No, I was asking you what. What's our rule here for the disconnection? Uh, how long the the, the, the team? Uh, we should wait around fifteen minutes. 
Okay. And once that happens, uh, what will happen? Uh, they'll just play four versus five, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Or they just c uh, they can just control the fifth player. And 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 how long has it been right now? <laughs> has it been fifteen minutes? <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't check actually. Yeah, so right now the time's actually at uh, 11 uh, 52, I think. I'm I'm not sure what time there was the disconnection. Uh, let me check. Okay, I'm uh, not sure. So there's a 9 minutes uh, disconnection, so we'll wait for 6 more minutes. Okay, he's um, actually <laughs> requesting from Riot. <laughs> and it's an inside joke because their team name is LOL. Yep. Yeah, and if yeah, if you call Val Volvo, I think for Riot they call him they call them Rito. Yeah, I think Rito. Rito. Yeah, I think Actually, so. I don't know. Have you played LOL ever? No. Lucky. So yeah, so right now it's uh it's eleven fifty three. So we're just uh waiting for the fourth member. Yeah, actually right now if I think this might be our first four versus five fifth disconnect. And uh, I think we've had we've paused the game longer than the game has go go gone on for now. So, uh, Vanny, maybe you could give us more info on Paradise. Actually, Paradise is a friend of EZG, friend team. Yeah, and he, they are from Jensen. You know, Genetic. Yeah, he he the he because he casts yeah. Uh, yeah, and maybe, yeah, right now, I think two of the strongest teams right now are Paradise and AZG. Right now, they've gone undefeated so far, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I think friends and... Two, yeah, go ahead. two teams are from Aziz. You know the Aziz company? Oh, uh, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I think they're from Aziz and Genetic uh, was a former uh, Aziz. Ah, Aziz, okay. The the computer brand. No no no, the, not the Asus, the Azus, A Z E. Ah yeah yeah, sorry, not familiar with with, with the brand. Uh, okay, actually it's an IT comp. Mm -mm. Okay, so okay, um, we're resuming, I guess. Actually, Charles, uh, I'm not sure, uh, whose friend, uh, I mean. I just know that uh, you know Jetto. <laughs> yeah, that that's uh, yeah, that, that's uh, actually I've never met anyone in real life, so. Oh, except Jetto. No, I haven't met Jetto in an. Uh, I I think uh, I knew him from someone else added me to the party, so. Oh. So I I I I'm not directly friends with anyone. So okay, bottom yeah, we have the Spectre. Yeah, so the Slark managed to kill the uh, the Windrunner at bottom, despite the uh, gyrocopter there and the Warlock hanging back. Well, this uh, Viper is just uh, farming uh, mid. So, yeah, this Clockwork right now. Usually, when you have Clockwork, uh, once you reach reach level six, you really don't want to spend a lot of time farming. You want to gank and make the most out of that hook. You can actually g get a lot of farm via your rocket flare by hitting it off lane. But this uh, Viper w wanted to make a go to Slark, but the Slark counter initiates. But now he flees, especially with the TP coming uh, coming in from the Windrunner. But now there's uh, the supports that rotate in, and so th I think yeah. So mistook there by the Clockwork, but they drive off the Viper. 
Yeah, sorry. Have you seen Sky? Have you seen Sky been brought back by using the glimpse? Yeah, I think yeah that was uh. Yeah, I, yeah. I so I think that was mi misplay because I think the the Takira got an ice path, but he evaded it because of the sandback. Okay, so this large is making go to Naga Siren, uh, and uh, it's uh, the sleep came in too late, and actually, uh, this large is now using his ultimate to escape, but the uh, disruptor is in using his ultimate to deal off damage and nice ice path catching there, but there's the continuation by the warlock, but the radiant stun regrets gets the kill, and uh, yeah. Three more heroes die, so that's a 4 4 nothing trade. So, nice play there by the Radiant, but then again, uh, LOL is forced to play uh, 4 versus 5 right now. And actually, this uh, this Jairo might get the Slark, who's e eating a lot of damage from the tower now. Uh, but I think he, he'll he escape. Ooh, the Clockwork actually blocks him, but uh, he manages to escape nonetheless. And there's a teleport by the Naga Siren, but she misses them. And this, yeah, there's just this uh, golem right now guarding their mid tower. Yeah, and of course, this expensive cosmetic items coming from, yeah, from both teams. Yeah, like this courier. Okay, so both teams now, uh, well, definite advantage for the radiant there, uh, actually significant. And perhaps there's also a psychological uh, disadvantage for the Dyer since they're playing 4 versus 5 now and somebody has to micro this uh, Warlock although it seems that that's what, just what they're doing right now. In terms of ward placement, yeah, I mean, both teams have have uh, observer wards on both sides of the river. And looks like uh, they're gathering at mid. Okay, yeah. Uh, Radiant just ha has their Spectre and this Disruptor at bottom. I think they're just looking to push. And the Spectre gun always uses ulti. Okay, so sorry, top, yeah. The Slark gets a kill on the Gyrocopter. He and he uses call down, but it's too late. Uh, the Slark gets a kill. And uses the Dark Pack to farm, and then there's a ping at the uh, bottom. I think this Windowner wants to defend, but he should really be careful, especially with the Disruptor there. Uh, yeah, and he's uh, sent back. And uh, this Spectre, especially with that, uh, his skill, uh, especially with that Desolate, quickly killed the Windrunner in just three hits. So actually, three three heroes there, and then the Slark's making a fight at mid and gets the Viper. So yeah, and uh, Living Online now calls the GG. So it's a fast game, uh, 19 minutes playtime. So thank you for watching the uh, group stages of the Jeddo Cup. Uh, if, if you want more info, you can tune in to the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Jeddo Cup or their Tumblr, uh, friendly.tumblr.com. And thank you for watching and staying up this late and good game by Team Paradise who notches in their fourth win. So thank you for watching and uh, this is your host, Charles Tan, uh, greeting you good night.